I'm Tanisha Hutzbeth, your Harris County Clerk and Chief Elections Official. Welcome to the Harris County Clerk's Office Elections Department, and thank you for stepping up to serve for the upcoming election. There are many moving parts to make an election happen, and watching them come together like a well-oiled machine in a jurisdiction as large as Harris County is amazing. Thanks to your dedication to public service, we can provide equitable and transparent election services to more than 2.5 million eligible voters across our county. That's greater than a population of 27 states. Can you believe that? If you are a clerk, a bilingual worker, a student tech updating wait times, a judge or a worker standing by to direct voters, every single one of you is essential for this machine to run smoothly. It takes dedicated civic-minded citizens just like you to provide access to democracy. We look forward to working alongside of you for many more years to come. Thank you. In this video, we are going to go over the Verity voting system. This includes usage, troubleshooting, and replacement of said equipment. A technical support technician is expected to 1. Provide on-site troubleshooting assistance to polling locations. 2. Communicate only with the presiding judges or their designees. 3. Continuously check in on assigned polling places throughout the day. 4. Log all actions taken on your assigned ServiceNow iPad. 5. Frequently check your iPad for assistance needed at your assigned locations. 6. Be available to respond to other tasks or emergency situations at your polling locations. 7. Use paper trouble logs if your iPad crashes or fails. 8. Deliver logs and equipment back to ETC at the end of the day. Inside of these two black bags are voting booths. The voting booths serve as the platform that duos are positioned on top of. They come in two varieties, accessible, identified by the red handle, and standard, identified by the black handle. We'll now go over how to set them up. The first step is to remove the contents of the bag. Inside you'll find three items, the privacy screens, large rear foot, and the booth itself. Next, flip the booth upside down. On the underside is a device called the Daisy Chain Power Kit. Let's take a look. On the front of the kit is the AC power adapter. To the left of the power adapter is the locking power cable, zip tied to an AC power cable. To the right of the adapter is the 6 inch AC power cable. Please note that there is an additional open outlet adjacent to the 6 inch cable located behind the brick. To set up the booth, first unfold the legs on either side, removing the two smaller front feet as you do so. Next, attach the smaller front feet to the two outer legs. Afterwards, attach the larger rear foot to the two inner legs. Release the velcroed cables on the power kit. Finally, stand the booth up. Position the booths in a line, with the accessible booth closest to the check-in table. This is the voting booth. Inside of this black bag is the ballot box. The ballot box serves as a protective container for the ballot bag and the ballots inside, as well as serving as a platform that the scan unit sits on top of. First, remove the ballot box from its travel case. Rotate the ballot box such that the green Pull to Set Up labels are facing up. Release the four latches on each side. Separate the two halves of the ballot box. Next, lower the floor of the ballot box currently folded up inside. Release the three elastic straps holding the lid to the front of the ballot box. Lift the lid up and over the top of the ballot box. The lid is double jointed, so make sure that you get the second joint on top of the first. Open the front door of the ballot box with the provided ballot box key. Press down on the two green Press Here labels to secure the ballot box's floor. Pull the white string towards the front of the ballot box in order to set the locking pins to the unlocked position. Located on the top of the ballot box is a small door covering a slot. This is the emergency reserve slot, where ballots go if the scan is down. On the rear is the emergency reserve access hatch. This is how the judge accesses the ballots in the emergency reserve slot once the scan has been replaced. This is the ballot box. This is a ballot bag. Ballot bags are the containers that protect scanned ballots. 
In order to set up the ballot bag, first completely open both halves of the zipper. Inside are two metal wires that make up the frame. Lower both metal wires all the way down, securing them in place with the Velcro. Please make sure that the metal wires are completely inside of the Velcro. Otherwise, the ballot bag will collapse once loaded with votes. Drape the lid of the ballot bag over the outside. Place the ballot bag inside of the ballot box, all the way to the back and all the way to the left with the label facing out. This is the ballot bag. This device is known as a controller. Controllers can be identified by the orange C located next to the handle. The controller is responsible for generating access codes and controlling a line of duos. We'll now go over the setup. Firstly, position the controller on the check-in table. Next, open the controller by releasing the two latches. On the underside of the lid is the tablet. The tablet is secured in place by a rotating blue lever on the top left, as well as a lock to the right. Next to the lock is the power cable compartment. Below the power cable compartment is the sealed V-drive compartment. Inside is a V-drive. Please do not break this seal or attempt to open the V-drive compartment. Located to the left of the V-drive compartment is the tablet's dock. Located below the V-drive compartment is the report printer. Open the power cable compartment by releasing the two tabs. Remove both halves of the power cable and close the lid. Connect both halves of the power cable. Plug the three-pronged side into the check-in table surge protector. The opposite end of the power cable is the locking tip. Pull back on the tip to release the locking mechanism. Connect the power cable by first rotating the locking tip so that the flat side faces up, and plug it into the port to the left of the red power button on the rear of the controller. Open the lid once more, release the tablet, and place it into its dock. Finally, connect the barcode reader to the USB port located on the V-Drive compartment door. This is the controller. This device is known as a duo. Duos are utilized by the voter to make their selection and print their ballots. Each duo will be positioned on top of a voting booth. First, make sure that the voting booth's locking pin is in the unlocked position by pulling it towards the front of the booth. Next, place the duo on top of the booth, making sure that the five rubber feet seat completely inside of the booth. Lock the duo in place by pushing the locking pin towards the rear of the booth. Open the lid to the duo. On the underside of the lid is the duo tablet. The tablet is secured in place by a blue lever on the upper left of the tablet, and a lock located to the right. Next to the lock is the Verity cable compartment. Below the Verity cable compartment is the sealed V-drive compartment. In contrast to the controllers, the duos do not arrive with anything inside of the V-drive compartment. Located to the left of the compartment is the tablet dock. Located below the dock is the ballot printer. We'll go over the operation of the printer later in this video. First, remove the Verity cable from its compartment by releasing the two blue tabs, and close the lid to the duo. The Verity cable, sometimes called data cable, is how each duo communicates with other duos on its voting line, as well as the controller in charge of the line. The Verity cables connect to the Verity cable ports on the rear of the duos. However, before we connect those, we'll connect the locking power cable from the booths to the duos. Rotate the locking power cable so that the flat side is facing up, and connect it to the port located to the left of the red power button. Next, connect each duo in line to the one before it in line using its Verity cable. The first duo in line will instead connect to the controller. Be sure to connect the power cables before connecting the Verity cables, as you can easily knock the Verity cables loose by bumping them. Open the lid to the duo. Release the tablet and set it into its dock. Connect the provided ATI module to the accessible duo at the front of the line. This is the duo. This piece of equipment is the scan unit. Scan unit is responsible for recording ballots once they are cast. The scan stores these votes in three places. On the scan itself, on the V-drives inside, and in the form of a paper ballot in the ballot bag. Place the scan unit on top of the ballot box with the handle facing towards the front of the ballot box. Line up the rubber feet with the holes in the ballot box and the scan will sit completely flush. Lock the scan to the ballot box by pushing the white string on the ballot box towards the rear. Scan units will arrive to your location sealed. Break the seal only with the presiding judge's permission. Open the lid to the scan unit. On the underside of the lid is the scan's tablet, secured in two places. 
the lever on the top left, as well as the lock to the right. Next to the lock is the power cable compartment. Below the power cable compartment is the sealed V-drive compartment. Please do not break the seal nor attempt to open the V-drive compartment. Located to the left is the tablet dock. Located below the V-drive compartment is the report printer. Located to the left of the printer is the ballot reader. The slot on the ballot reader is where printed ballots are inserted in order to be recorded. The piece of paper located on the inside of the sealed scan, when first opened, is known as a chain of custody. The chain of custody indicates that the scan hasn't been tampered with during transit. Remove the two halves of the power cable from the power cable compartment and close the lid. Connect both halves, plugging the three-pronged end into a nearby outlet. Plug the locking end into the port located to the left of the red power button by rotating it so that the flat side is facing up and inserting. Open the lid to the scan unit. Remove the tablet and place it into its dock. Finally, turn it on. This is the scan unit. This Black Pelican case is known as an ePoll book case. The ePoll book cases contain ePoll books and their various accessories. ePoll books are used to look up and check in voters. Let's go over the contents now. Located in the center are the ePoll books, as well as an extension cord for the ePoll books. Located to the left are the lightning cables, used for charging the ePoll books. Located below that are the red stands. These are what the ePoll books sit on for most of the day. Located to the right are the charging blocks for the lightning cables. Further to the right is the MiFi, as well as its USB-C charging cable. MiFi's are used to generate a Wi-Fi signal for the ePoll books to use. In order to turn on the MiFi, please press and hold the power button until you see the Verizon logo. Some locations will also receive something called an MP70. MP70's are similar to MiFi's in that they generate Wi-Fi signals. The difference being that MP70's are significantly stronger. If your location gets an MP70, do not turn on your MiFi. To turn on your MP70, simply plug it into a wall outlet. Please position your MiFi or MP70 somewhere near an exterior door or window in order to guarantee the best signal for the ePoll books. This is the ePoll book case. The device shown here is called a daisy chain power kit. It allows each booth to supply at least one other booth with AC power. We will now go over how that works. Located behind the power adapter on the left is the long AC power cable. This cable supplies the booth with power. Plug it into the surge protector. Located to the right of the power adapter is the 6-inch AC power cable. It is plugged into one of two outlets located on the daisy chain power kit. The second outlet is unoccupied and positioned adjacent. This is where the long AC power cable from another booth plugs into. Each booth will run the long AC power cable to the booth before it or after it in line. All AC power cables must be running the same direction for a given voting line. This box contains an ADA call bell. Inside the box you will find the base, the two halves of the telescoping pole, the transmitter, the receiver, the receiver power adapter, the back plate, the ADA plate, two screws and two wing nuts in a plastic bag, and the assembly instruction manual. To assemble the call bell, first remove everything from the call bell's case. Next, set the base flat on the ground. Screw the lower half of the telescoping pole onto the base. Screw the upper half of the telescoping pole onto the lower half. Extend the telescoping pole by loosening the two joints, extending them, and then tightening them. Take the back plate and loosen the thumb screw on the rear until you are able to set the ring over the top of the telescoping pole. Align the screw with the groove along the top of the pole and tighten the thumb screw. Line up the two holes in the back plate with the two holes on the ADA plate. Insert one of the screws through the top hole and hold the plate in place. Tighten one of the wing nuts on the screw until firm. Do the same for the lower hole. Make sure the wing nuts are on the back side of the ADA plate, not the front. Next, plug the receiver's power adapter into a wall outlet and then into the receiver. Place the receiver somewhere inside of the polling location. Once you have done this, test the transmitter by pressing the gray button located on the front. Following this, speak to the presiding judge to determine where they would like the transmitter to be positioned in the parking lot. This piece of equipment is known as the Duo Go. Its intended purpose is to make the process of curbside voting easier for both the attending clerks as well as for the voter. 
In short, it allows a Duo's tablet to operate and print a ballot even when not connected to its base station or source of power. We'll go over the operation of the Duo Go in more detail later. For now, let's go over setup. The Duo Go will arrive to your location secured within a cardboard box, shown here. These both secure the Duo Go and its components for transport. Remove the Duo Go and the white cloth bag from the box. Inside of the white cloth bag, you will find both the power cable and the power cable adapter for the Duo Go. Remove both halves of the power cable and set the cloth bag back inside of the Duo Go's box for safekeeping. Before we proceed, let's go over a few things on the Duo Go. This side, shown here, is the front of the Duo Go. Located to the left of the open section under a sliding dust cover is an ATI module port. Located above the open section is a narrow slot. This is where the printed ballot will emerge after a curbside voter makes their selections. Now let's take a look at the other side of the unit. Located on the top right of the unit is the charging port. This is where the Duo Go's power cable plugs into. It is responsible for keeping the Duo Go's printer's battery charged. Located in the top middle of the unit is a lock. This lock is opened by the key without a liner that has a black tag. Let's open the unit and take a look inside. Located at the top is the Duo Go's printer. This is what allows a voter to print their ballot even when the tablet itself is not attached to a base station. There are three lights labeled Power, Data, and Status. We'll go over those in a moment. Located directly below the printer is a Velcro strap. This holds the tablet of the curbside Duo in place while it is being used by a curbside voter. The tablet sits face down in the Duo Go, with the strap running across the rear of the tablet. Finally, located in the bottom right is a short USB cable. This cable is what allows the Duo tablet to communicate with both the Duo Go's printer as well as the Duo Go's ATI module port. Now, let's continue with the setup. Place the Duo Go face down on the Duo Go table. Connect both ends of the Duo Go's power cable together, then connect the power cable to a source of AC power. Plug the other end of the power cable into the Duo Go's charging port. With the Duo Go's tagged key, open the rear of the Duo Go and verify that the printer is charging. Let's go over those three lights from earlier now. Located on the left side of the printer are the power, data, and status lights. These can tell us a bit of info on the printer. The power light is responsible for telling us whether or not the printer is on. When the printer is on and connected to AC power, in this case, the charging cable, it will glow green. When the printer is on but running off battery power, it will glow amber. The data light indicates when the printer is actually printing. Under normal circumstances, you should only ever see this light come on when the unit is turning on. If this light ever glows red, it indicates a failure with the printer. Finally, there's the status light. This light tells you a couple of things. If it's glowing solid amber, it means that the unit is currently charging. If it's glowing amber and blinking, that indicates that the unit is not at 100% charge. Slow blinks mean 75%, medium blinks mean 50%, and fast blinks mean 25% or less. Now that we've explained those lights, let's verify that the unit turns on and charges. Located above and to the left of the lights is a power button. Press and hold that button until all three lights come on, and then release. If the unit is connected to its charging cable, and that charging cable is connected to a source of AC power, the power light should be glowing a solid green. If the printer was not at 100% full charge before arriving, the status light may also glow a solid amber. This is normal. It is important that the Duo Go remain on for the entire day and connected to its charging cable when not in use. We'll now go over the Duo Go's role in curbside voting. Once a voter has indicated they'd like to vote curbside via the buzzer, one of the judges as well as one other poll worker will head outside with one of the e-poll books in order to check in the voter. Once the e-poll book produces a barcode, the judge takes it back inside. From here, the judge uses the barcode reader and generates an access code. Note: Use only the controller attached to the curbside duo to produce the curbside voter's access code. If the barcode reader attached to the other controller is used, you will not be able to use the access code on the curbside duo. Once the correct controller has generated an access code for the curbside voter, enter the access code into the curbside duo. The duo will then prompt you to insert paper to continue. Do not insert paper into the duo's base station. Instead, unlock the duo's tablet from the case. It should, if an access code has been entered, display Connect the Duo Go Carrier. At this point, remove the tablet from its dock and open the rear hatch to the Duo Go if it's closed. Unsecure the Velcro straps and lay them to the side of the Duo Go. Located on the lower left-hand side of the Duo tablet is a USB port. Connect the USB cable on the lower right-hand corner of the inside of the Duo Go's case to the Duo tablet's USB port. Gently lay the Duo tablet face down inside of the Duo Go. Please note, the Duo tablet must be correctly oriented inside of the Duo Go. If the USB cable seems too short to lay the Duo tablet inside of the Duo Go, it's likely that you have the tablet oriented incorrectly. You may also have to lay the tablet in at an angle in order to get it to fit under the Duo Go's rear hatch's hinge. 
Once you have connected the tablet to the Duo Go, secure the tablet in place using the Velcro straps. Finally, retrieve a piece of thermal ballot paper. This next step is very important to prevent any potential issues, so pay close attention. Hold the thermal ballot paper so that you're able to see both the black rectangles and the black arrow. Rotate it so that the black arrow is facing down. Carefully insert the ballot paper, arrow down, into the printer. Be sure to insert the paper as straight as possible, otherwise it may result in a paper jam. The printer should, if the paper is inserted fully and correctly, engage and grip the paper, pulling it in. Gently fold the paper over, being sure not to cause any sharp bends or creases, and then close the rear hatch of the Duo Go behind it, making sure it clicks shut. Finally, disconnect the Duo Go's charging cable from the Duo Go. Flip the Duo Go over. If done correctly, the Duo Go should display Sheet Inserted Correctly. If it displays something else, for example, more than one sheet inserted, or Sheet Inserted Incorrectly, open the Duo Go and verify that the sheet has in fact been inserted with the correct orientation. At this point, if the voter has requested an accessible aid, such as the ATI module, you could connect it to the Duo Go by sliding open the dust cover, like so, and connecting the ATI module to the Duo Go. Take both the Duo Go and the curbside carrier envelope out to the curbside voter. Give both to the voter and allow them to make their selections. Once the voter finalizes their selections, the Duo Go will then print their ballot out through the thin slot located above the tablet screen. Instruct the voter to inspect their ballot thoroughly for any mechanical damage or printer errors. Once they are satisfied, instruct the voter to insert their ballot into the curbside carrier envelope with the lower half sticking out. Retrieve both the curbside carrier envelope with the printed ballot inside and the Duo Go from the voter. Instruct the voter to wait there while the judge takes their ballot, obscured by the curbside carrier envelope, inside and inserts it into the scan unit. Using the curbside carrier envelope, the judge inserts the exposed lower half of the voter's printed ballot into the scan unit. If the curbside voter would like for a passenger in their car to witness the ballot being scanned, they are permitted to do so. Once the judge has verified that the ballot has been counted, they return to the curbside voter with an I voted sticker. Give the voter their sticker and head back inside with the Duo Go. At this point, the tablet inside of the Duo Go should be displaying the message, the ballot marking session is complete. Place the Duo Go face down on the Duo Go table and reconnect the charging cable to the Duo Go. Open the rear hatch of the Duo Go and unsecure the Velcro straps. Gently lift the Duo tablet up just enough to be able to grip and disconnect the USB cable connected to the tablet. Place the tablet back into the correct base station and lock it in place. Please note, do not attempt to place the Duo tablet in a different base station. The tablet and base station are paired and will not work otherwise. Verify that the Duo Go printer is both on and charging. Verify that the tablet has been successfully reconnected to the base station. Please note, if a voter indicates they'd like to vote curbside, it is important to keep the ballot dry. If it's raining, do everything in your ability to keep the ballot dry. Otherwise, the scan unit will not accept the printed ballot. This is a sneeze guard. The sneeze guards are placed in front of the iPads as well as in front of the controllers. They will come unassembled in a flat box. Inside of the flat box you will find a clear barrier, two aluminum supports, and four thumb screws. In order to assemble the sneeze guard, first line up the two holes in the barrier with the two holes on one aluminum support. The barrier should protrude from the aluminum support like this and not sit nearly flush like this. Next, screw in two of the thumb screws through the barrier into the aluminum support. Line up the second support with the remaining two holes in the barrier. Insert the last two thumb screws and tighten. Finally, stand up the assembled sneeze guard. It should look like this. If it looks like this, the barrier is upside down. This is the sneeze guard. The voting process in Harris County is pretty simple. The voter will enter the polling location and check in at an e poll book. From there, the e poll book generates a barcode, which is then read by the barcode reader. The barcode reader instructs the controller to produce an access code with that voter's ballot style. The clerk at the check-in table issues the voter one or more pieces of ballot paper along with their access code. From there, the voter goes to one of the open duos attached to the controller their access code was printed from. The voter enters in their access code, inserts their ballot paper, and navigates the ballot making their selections. Once the voter is satisfied with their selections, they will print their ballot. The ballot has not been cast at this point. For that, the voter must then insert their printed ballot into the scan unit. Once the scan unit produces the American flag, the voter's ballot has been recorded and they may receive their I Voted sticker. In this section, we are going to cover common issues and how to troubleshoot them. Before we proceed, please understand that you may not attempt to troubleshoot a problem on a voting line with a voter present on that line. You may inadvertently disrupt that voter's voting process and cause them unnecessary anxiety. Headphones not working. 
If the headphones on the ATI are not working, please check that the headphones are plugged into the audio port with the headphone symbol. iPad is losing power. If an e -pull book is losing power throughout the day, please verify that the e -pull book is plugged into a lightning cable and that the lightning cable is plugged into a white charging brick. The USB ports on the surge protectors are not sufficient to keep the e -pull books charged. Surge protector has no power. If the surge protector is not receiving power, please verify that the switch located near the base of the surge protector is set to the on position. Furthermore, please verify that it is not connected to a dead outlet. MiFi slash MP70 not on or no signal. If the MiFi is not working, please verify that it's turned on. If you see a charging percentage, shown here, the MiFi is not on. You must see the main menu to confirm that it's truly on. If the MP70 is not working, please verify that it's plugged into an outlet and that the outlet is able to produce power. Finally, verify that the MiFi or MP70 is positioned near an exterior door or window. Duo Paper Jam If the Duo experiences a paper jam, you can clear it by following the on-screen prompts. First, enter the poll worker code. The Duo will prompt you to send the paper forward or backwards. Send it whichever direction requires it to travel the shorter distance while simultaneously guiding the paper back to the center of the track with your hand. Finally, select Reprint Sheet. The voter will need to be issued an additional piece of ballot paper. Sheet fails to scan. If the scan unit rejects a printed ballot, you can attempt to flip the ballot over and rescan it. Failing this, you're able to lift the cover on the ballot reader and clean the glass panes with an alcohol wipe to remove any dust or debris and attempt to rescan the ballot. If these steps fail, the ballot will have to be reprinted. Report printer out of paper. If the controller or scan unit displays printer out of paper, please open the cover on the report printer, remove the old spindle, and replace the roll of paper, making sure the paper feeds from under the roll. Battery dead or not connected. If a voting machine is showing a dead battery symbol in the lower right hand corner, it means the battery is dead or not connected. Verify that the battery is plugged in by checking the slot on the rear of the machine. If it is plugged in, verify the battery's percent charge. Red light on duo, controller, or scan. If there is a red light displaying on the base station of a voting machine, please verify that the tablet is seated completely in his dock. This is caused by a poor connection between the tablet and base station. Controller not found. This message displays whenever a duo fails to detect a connected controller. If every single duo on a voting line is affected, it is either because of the controller, the first duo, or the first Verity cable. Unplug and plug back in the first Verity cable. If the problem persists, skip the first duo entirely. Connect the controller to the second duo. If the problem resolves, the issue is the first duo. If the problem persists, the issue is likely the controller. If it is affecting only some of the duos, go to the first affected duo and check the cable connections between the last non-affected duo and the first affected duo. Unplug both ends and plug them back in. If the problem persists, try skipping the first affected duo. If the problem resolves, the first affected duo was bad. If the problem persists, it is likely either the Verity cable or the outgoing port on the last non-affected duo. If it is affecting only one of the duos, and that duo is in the middle of the line, but the subsequent duos are fine, that one affected duo is bad and will need to be replaced. ATI module not working. If the ATI module is not working, please attempt unplugging and plugging it back in. No AC power. If a voting machine is showing no AC power, this indicates a break in the connection somewhere. Verify that all ends of the power cable, as well as all ends of the daisy chain power kit, are fully seated and connected to a live outlet. Tablet unlocked. If the tablet is displaying tablet unlocked while the tablet is in fact locked in place, attempt to first shift the tablet to the right. If that fails to resolve the issue, the unit will need to be serviced. Duo Go displays red light. If the Duo Go displays a red light under status, this typically indicates that the printer has experienced an error. Reboot the Duo Go. If the problem persists, the unit will need to be serviced. Unknown error. If any unit displays the message, an unknown error has occurred, please reboot to continue. Check the lifetime counter located near the bottom.
If the lifetime counter reads a value of negative 1, that indicates that the tablet is simply not fully seated. Press down on the tablet and the negative 1 will switch to a non-negative value. Following this, reboot. If it does not display a value of negative 1, the unit will need to be serviced. Power cable not inserting. If the locking power cable is not inserting, please verify that the cable is oriented correctly. Remember, flat side facing up. If it is oriented correctly and still not inserting, check the tip for any obvious damage. The tip should be perfectly circular. If it is not, the cable will need to be serviced. Some techs are issued with reserve duos. If a duo is found to be unfixable at a pulling location, it will be replaced by a reserve duo. In order to replace a duo, you must first ensure that the voting line is free of voters. Turn off the malfunctioning duo and place the tablet into its dock. Using one of the provided manila trouble logs, please include a brief description of the issue and tie it around one of the handles. If you tie it around both, we can't open the unit up. Place the duo's Verity cable back into the Verity cable compartment, close the duo, and remove it from the line. The faulty duo will remain at the polling location. Record the duo serial number on the troubleshooting and observation log included in your folder. Record the reserve duo serial number on the same log. Remember, both the original and the replacement duo need their serial numbers recorded. Place the new duo onto the original duo's booth, open the lid, lock the tablet in place, and connect the duo's Verity cable. Finally, turn the unit on. This is how to replace a duo. Some techs are issued with reserve controllers. If a controller is found to be unfixable at a polling location, it will be replaced by a reserve controller. Before replacing a controller, you must call one of the ETC managers. They will walk you through the pre-definition process. In order to replace a controller, first ensure that the voting line is free of voters. Turn off the malfunctioning controller and place the tablet into its dock. Using one of the provided manila trouble logs, please include a brief description of the issue and tie it around one of the handles. If you tie it around both, we can't open the unit up. Place the controller's AC power cable back into the power cable compartment, unplug the barcode reader, disconnect the Verity cable, close the controller, and remove it from the check-in table. The faulty controller will remain at the polling location. Record the controller's serial number on the troubleshooting and observation log included in your folder. Record the reserve controller's serial number on the same log. Remember, both the original and the replacement controller need their serial numbers recorded. Place the new controller on the check-in table. Open the lid, lock the tablet in place, and connect the AC power cable. Finally, turn the unit on. While the unit is booting, swap out the paper roll inside of the controller for the correct color. If the controller already has the correct paper color, you may skip this step. Once the unit has finished booting, you will have an ETC manager walk you through the pre-definition process. Do not attempt to predefine the controller on your own. If done wrong, it can cause more issues than it fixes. Once the controller is predefined and the poles are open, you may connect the barcode reader and the Verity cable. This is how to replace the controller. Some techs are issued with a reserve scan. If a scan is found to be unfixable at a polling location, it will be replaced by a reserve scan. Before replacing a scan, you must call one of the ETC managers. They will walk you through the pre-definition process. In order to replace a scan, turn it off and place the tablet into its dock. Using one of the provided manila trouble logs, please include a brief description of the issue and tie it around one of the handles. If you tie it around both, we can't open it up. Place the scan's AC power cable back into the power cable compartment and close the scan. In order to remove the scan, you will need to break the seal on the ballot box's front door and unlock it from the top of the ballot box. Make sure you have the judge's permission to do so. The faulty scan will remain at the polling location. Record the scan's serial number on the troubleshooting and observation log included in your folder. Record the reserve scan's serial number on the same log. Remember, both the original and the replacement scan need their serial numbers recorded. Place the new scan onto the ballot box and secure it in place. At this point, lock and seal the door to the ballot box. Open the scan, lock the tablet in place, and connect the AC power cable. Finally, turn the unit on. Once the unit has finished booting, you will have an ETC manager walk you through the pre-definition process. Do not attempt to predefine the scan on your own. 
If done wrong, it can cause more issues than it fixes. This is how to replace the scan. If you have to replace a piece of equipment, write the serial number to the bad machine here. To the right is the replacement equipment serial number box. This is where new equipment serial numbers go. Before you leave your polling location, make sure that you get your judge's signature somewhere along the bottom of the page. This is the troubleshooting and observation log.